G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Okay guys, we're in Budrum today and another great and exciting show coming up in Colour in Your Life. I'm with a master pastelist, Christine Clark. Welcome Graham. <laughs> thank you. Thank you darling. <laughs> uh, Christine, fabulous, fabulous artist, works in the Malula Bar Sunshine area. It's a beautiful area isn't it? Mm, fantastic. It is. Sunshine Coast is it's just gorgeous. It's a fantastic place. Yeah, yeah. And Christine's really well known for a number of different things with your work aren't you? It's yes. not just and we're going to be doing some a fantastic piece today. It's going to blow you away. She's doing a, a 1920s series of ladies that have got vibrant colours in them in portraiture. It's going to be really exciting. But you do do a lot of other things like the, the beach scenes. I mean this one behind yes, us for a start. Which right. is just a beautiful piece. I love the way that Christine has this really loose effect with, with pastels. Some people can get really tight. But your expression over that whole piece, you can see the lines as they come in and out. It's fabulous. Tell me a little bit more about your history and your work. I have been painting and drawing since I was a little girl. Mm. It's been nearly 35 years I've been painting for. Wonderful. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And you're a multi-award winning artist as well. I mean, you've got this litany of prizes that you've won for your work. Thank you. John Anderson, one of our famous politicians, owns your work as well. Yes, that's correct. It's quite, quite amazing what you've done. But we're going to uh, dive into this today. This is really exciting. I mean, there's a lot of vibrancy and colour in what Christine does. And this is a series that she's putting together on ladies and you're, you're planning on doing a whole bunch of these all through the, the, the great clothe era, I suppose you could say, yeah. of the 20s and 30s and 40s. Yes, that's what I'd love to but, do. But this is, a, and it's going to be a really interesting exercise as well, it really demonstrates the, the great ability that Christine has. But we're going to go and create this Roaring Twenties special, I, I suppose you could yes, say. Yes. And then um, And then spend the rest of the day with Christine putting this together, but come along for the ride, it'll be fantastic. Okay, Christine, now you've got a fabulous setup there with a number of women's faces, one of them being your beautiful daughters, uh, and then you've already made a start on this particular piece. Now, how, do, how, does, how does all this reference to each other? How do, you, how do you use all this together? Well, I sort of decided that the 1920s was bright and happy. So I thought red. Why not red background yep. to start with? And when I talk to my students, I say to them, and it sounds a bit gruesome, I know, but if you're doing human form, and I love doing human form, that if you peel the um, layers back of the skin, the closer you get to the blood. And here we have red, so we've already got that, and we just need to build on that. So that's what makes it exciting, I think. I start off generally uh, by choosing a subject and today I've chosen my daughter, mm -hmm. Sharon, and I actually put tracing paper over and I sketch lines for where the nose, mouth and eyes come. So it's the lower lid, mm -hmm. the top lid, the eyeball, the actual eyebrows, the hairline, the chin where the bottom of the lip is, the top of the lip, where the teeth start and finish. Also a few vertical lines to line up, uh, for instance, the corner of the mouth, the nose and the eye. Mm -hmm. So after I've done that, then I work out how large it will need to be with my proportional divider, which is right here. Okay. 
So I take, for instance, perhaps the length of the nose. This is set on um, the golden mean, 1.6. And then the other end will show me the length of the nose oh, okay. here. So I wanted to go back into the 1920s, so I used reference material from the internet. Yep. And Carol Lombard's hair was just gorgeous, so I thought I'll just try that. But I do need to go into these beautiful, warm, uh, caramel colours. And this is Melissa George, so she's an actress, Australian actress. So that's what I've taken, and it will be Sharon's face, Carol Lombard's hair, and, Car and uh, Melissa George's hair colour. That's pretty amazing. I mean, you're using imagination and technology to get the results you want. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Love it. Really great. Love it. And then um, I research and find something that I would like to uh, dress her in. Yeah. So the background is red uh, acrylic that's yeah. had uh, three layers of Matisse China red. Okay. And uh, I do use a roller to put it on with. Yeah. So we can start now. I like to wear a glove when I'm doing pastel. Okay. I find that it stops, well, one thing, some of the pastels are toxic. Mm -hmm. um, not very many of them, but um, some of the reds and things like that. And so I like to use the glove and it keeps the hands clean, but uh, sometimes it gets a bit too hot to use the glove. Mm -hmm. I just cut the fingers off and just use a couple of the fingers. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, this is um, an old shaving brush. It yeah. used to be my father's in yeah. the Air Force. So I'm just going to use that to take the charcoal. Then I get the eraser and I take a little bit out here and there. So you're just really sort of getting that darkness out of your picture as much as you can. Yeah. I want a ghostly image, but I don't necessarily want all that information. Yeah. I'm just getting a few reds and pinks. Now, you would think that there's enough on here already. Yeah. <laughs> But we're going to put a few more. I scribble. I like to scribble. I think it's good to have a nice scribble. And, and really, you're just you're, you're just building form with. with yeah, this. yeah. Just going to put a few of the darker uh, shades. You probably can't see this, so I might just go into this. Is the charcoal again? Okay. And charcoal works beautifully with pastel. So I'm just going to go in here and put a little bit of the dark, put her eyebrow in and a little bit of dark on the nostril. I'm going to put a little bit of the eye in. So I've got to look closely at Sharon's eyes mm -hmm. and see where I can put this pupil in. So as a, as a portrait artist, is it important for you to have the eyes in first of all or? Like? Very, very close uh -huh. to it. Yeah, I love putting them in. I, I think it's the mirror to the soul mm -hmm. and for me that I love the eyes to work and I know if they, it works then most of it all comes together. Sure. I mean you're actually, you've got somebody to talk to while you're doing the picture. Absolutely. <laughs> So, in, in any essence, what actually really drew you to the portrait more than the other work? Oh, well, I, I just love figures. I don't really care if it's portrait or a full figure. Yeah. And I love people doing things. I think it tells a story and I love little kids. Yeah. Little chubby little two-year-olds and so cute. So I've been doing them for a very long time. You, you really do have some fantastic pieces, particularly with the kids. I mean, I love the, the work you do with children at play. and. The emotion that you put into your work is, is wonderful. Thank you. I, I just love the kids. I've got six grandchildren and I'm constantly doing them. So I'm just going to put a little bit eyelashes and stuff like that. It's, it's not for any reason other than it just gives me a place to uh, work from. Sure. I like working all over. All over. Oh, okay. You just don't go from left to right. You no. put in the, which no. I think is a more sensible idea anyway. Yeah. My teacher, who I was with for 11 years, Paul McDonald Smith, he was president for the Victorian Artists Society. He was fantastic. He said, if you're going to use a colour mm -hmm. and you use it down here, then find somewhere else to use it. Fair enough. 
Balance the picture. Yeah, it needed that balance. It has to have that balance. You're one of those ladies that really travelled the country a lot, working with other well-known artists as well and picking up information, doing workshops. I mean, you've, yeah. you've been with yeah. some quite, quite well-known people. Certainly have. Yeah. I think I went to Robert Wade seven times. Okay. And he's a watercolour artist and, you know, top of his tree. Yeah. Beautiful man. It's still just mapping. I'm still finding my way in the work. So I'm putting on some lighter areas just to show me where the light sits. I'm going to do her eyes now. Okay. So I want to get a few soft colours. Now Sharon has greeny grey eyes, mm -hmm. but my theory is that you put the bright colours on before and you can always dull them down, but you can't get them back. Okay. So you're just really dabbing the yeah, pastel. Yeah, just on. dabbing it, just little dots. Okay. And then always referring back to your material yeah, as well. Yeah, always, always. Yeah, it's a yeah. great idea to have that there like that. Well, to get the eyes right, yeah. you've got to get the expression. They're pretty electric looking eyes. Yeah, sure are. They look a bit scary. Actually, when I do, do my portrait classes, one of my students, she says to me, oh my God, she said, it looks like a werewolf before, it looks like a person. <laughs> Because I have all these scribbles <laughs> all over it. <laughs> but that, but that's, a, that's a good point. I mean, a, a, a lot of people try and finish a work before it's even started. Yeah. And it's, it's building up all of those different layers that gets you there. It sure is. I love the use of the red underneath. It, it just, there's, there's something about that. I mean, some people use neutral grey, white, but that red really makes it quite dynamic. Yeah, I think so. So you've already started and it's dynamic. Yeah. Now, we're going to put the whites of the eyes, which you might be interested to know are not white. It is called jacaranda. Mm -hmm. It's an art spectrum colour. It's quite beautiful for the whites of the eyes. So now she doesn't look quite <laughs> devil-like, I guess. <laughs> as she did. I like the red. I think it looks great. You would teach a lot of this colour theory in your workshops too. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do a colour workshop number one and a colour workshop number two. Uh -huh. It's mainly uh, the colour wheel and complementary colours, mm -hmm. analogous colours mm -hmm. and, and also then we go into tertiaries in the next uh, section and Yes, boom. but it, it, takes a, it takes a teacher with skill like yours to be able to teach that oh. as well. Well, I've got a lot of years behind me, haven't I? Absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of beautiful teachers, yeah. you know. A lot of wonderful people out there that have taught me a lot and I just like to pass this sort of thing on. That's I think fantastic. it makes art exciting it and does. it puts some colour in your life. <laughs> Something like that, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to put a little bit of the actual colour that I used up here for the eye, mm -hmm. just in for the teeth. Right, now we're going to do some hair. You better yeah. give us some hair. It's a completely foreign word to yes. me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the shape of this one. Okay. Which is very 20s. Very, isn't it? Yeah. very 1920s. I'm looking at colours that are in here, but yeah. the same as what I did with the eyes. I have to put the warmer colours underneath. Uh -huh. I can always calm them down, but I can't get them back. Sure. Now I'm just going to do the headband which will run across the forehead here. So I use my little soft paintbrush. Yep. And I will just take this area out, across there. Use the kneadable eraser mm -hmm. and just remove it. There you go. I can feel the roaring 20s just coming, coming roaring on. back right That's now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> just going to put a little bit of the charcoal in here as the shadow little bit up here and across the headband. And as you might know by now, I love colour. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> it's like the whole house is like a giant rainbow. <laughs> now with this roaring 20s avenue that you're going down, which I think is very exciting, you've also travelled a great deal as well. And I noticed that you've got some really fantastic Venetian shots as well from the uh, the, the masks, the oh, masquerade yeah. in the stores, and then obviously the canals, some of the beautiful uh, oh, Venetian stunning. canals. Yeah, Fantastic absolutely place, isn't beautiful. it? Fantastic place, isn't it? Beautiful, yeah. And I noticed one of, the, one of the shots you got there, because I've been to Venice a few times myself, but 
I think it's one of the canals that goes past Marco Polo's mm. old home. That's absolutely yeah. stunning. And the history. Oh my God. Yeah, history. it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah stunning, it stunning back hundreds stuff. of years. So You're really just sort of kept just continuing to build yep, to those lighter regions. Yep, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. yeah, I'm just building one colour over the other to pull it out. I keep going back with the charcoal just to find Fine tune. where I'm going, yeah. One stage you owned your own gallery. Yeah, the Blue Dolphin well. Gallery. The Blue Dolphin Gallery. Yeah, it tell was me, lovely. Tell me a bit about that. A few of us went in, there's four of us, and we had a great time for seven years. It was fantastic. We had a lot of our own local artists, Sunshine Coast artists, and um, people used to come from all over Australia and sometimes the world, yeah. and uh, we would post paintings out or they would take it under their arm uh, and they'd buy one nearly every year. That's fantastic. You know, isn't they it? loved it, yeah, and they loved the local artists and all the local scenes and wildlife and stuff. Yeah, fantastic. it was good. Yeah, it's great, great. I know you've obviously you know, accelerated your career on, you know, way beyond that once again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just going to put some lighter colours now on the skin mm -hmm. to help bring this up again. Now obviously we have to go and do something about the eyebrows mm -hmm. and the teeth. The thing about teeth is that you really don't fill in all the teeth, it's just a suggestion. It is a suggestion, yeah. yeah. Handy charcoal. Mm -hmm. I will correct this but at the moment I'm just putting the gum line in. So it's just the top part just of the, the gum. Just the top part mm -hmm. of the gum. I do use a pencil. I also use these pan pastel applicators and they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes yes. when you want to just dull off the outside of the eye the white of the eye because mm -hmm. it isn't as white then you can just touch it with that all right. and it just takes it down a tone well apart from the fantastic landscape and seascape scenes that you do around this area you're versatile enough with uh, with your creativity, and I think this is probably more due to Mark, your husband, who has a great love <laughs> yes. for cars as well. And you've yes, you've actually boats. painted a number of uh, cars, or pastel a number of cars, a Ford Falcon GDHO, which looks fantastic for all those car enthusiasts out there, <laughs> and also the Holden Monaro, and a number of others as well. Yeah, you, you like doing this? Mark for yeah. Jag. I didn't mind doing them, but it was his idea, and I sort of rather do figurative work, but what can you do? The man loves cars, so. <laughs> but as I said, I mean, your versatility is pretty amazing. I mean, I, you've got some fantastic yachting shots that you've done as well, and I love yeah. the looseness. It, it's sort of, there's just a suggestion in a lot of your work of what's actually there, and all of a sudden, you step back, as you do a lot, yeah. and the picture just falls into and place. It just comes together. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it's a great skill to have. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy doing it. I love being able to just be really loose and just scribble. Yeah, fantastic. Now, with your workshops, which I know are very popular on the Sunshine Coast, I mean, you've got a, a large following of very enthusiastic students, but what are, what are the things that you try to emphasise to them most of all when you're obviously teaching them? I guess not to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And I guess watching them paint, oh, I love it watching them paint yeah. because they get so surprised about what happens and then I get so excited like, oh good, we can do this and we can do that. <laughs> and that's what I just love about it. That's great. Well, I mean, that's a, an enthusiastic teacher ends up with enthusiastic pupils. Yes, I guess. We have some fun, we sure do. That's the main thing. <laughs> There you go, that's a really handy little tool then, isn't oh, it? Oh, this it's is great. <laughs> and they're just diff different shaped sponges, are they? Yeah, and so if you've got to get into a tight spot, well yeah. then you can you just get in and oh, use the corner of make. it. Now we're going to put some bling on. Love the bling. All us girls love the bling. So here we go. Pearlised ink. Pearlised ink. Hmm. And I also, I might as well put this out. This is metallic light gold. Okay. As well. Very light, light gold. Light gold. For the centre of the flowers. Okay. So dipping a little bit in and 
placing it over the petals. So I'll put it on all the petals and then I will put the gold in the centre. Mm -hmm. I also need to put a bit of it around the edge of the band on her hair. So I think because of the nature of the stuff that you've used, it's got a metallic base in it so you can see it shining. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Love you that. probably see it across the room as you walk in. Yeah, and at night when the lights are down, you can generally see it. The shine as it comes through. Yeah. It's iridescent. This is, I think, where your um, play with imagination comes in. Yes. It's sort of just about design anything that you want to do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. Really fun. Playing dress ups. There you go. <laughs> You're designing your own jewellery. Now, Christine, you're in a number of galleries in the Sunshine Coast area. Now, folks can see your work at Gallery Beneath, at Malula Bar, yes. Art Nouveau at Butterham, and Raw Art Gallery outside the Sheraton, uh, Noosa and Hearts and Minds in Tawanton. So you're in quite a few galleries yes. at this end as well. Yes, I am. And I think the thing is that when you look at your work, I mean, you really capture these precious moments of, of everyday life and of people, and I think that that's probably the most appealing part of your work towards the audiences is that they just love to see the humanity in yeah. what you do. Oh, well, thank you, Graham. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Love people, love painting them. <laughs> Fantastic, you do a marvellous job. Thank you. All right, guys, well, another fantastic day. We brought the Roaring Twenties back to life today, so it was just amazing. Christine? Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. It was an absolute pleasure. Oh, I've just loved having you here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We loved you watching your work, and, and I'm sure the audience got a great deal out of this. Is a very, Thank very you. talented human being. Now, your website is christineclarkart.com.au. Come in and have a look. There's some really, really emotive works that Christine has on her site, and some fantastic stuff of the coast and the landscapes. It's really, really, really well done. Uh, also, once again, you can come to colourinyourlife.com.au. Come in and have a talk to us. There's thousands of people in these days. We're getting millions of hits on YouTube. So the show is really crossing, crossing the globe these days and doing some amazing things for very talented people like this. Uh, and also our Facebook page as well. Uh, just come in and like us on Facebook. Uh, always, once again, thank you. Roaring Twenties brought to life. I think this is just amazing, this stuff. Can you imagine the backgrounds with greens and purples and yellows? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. And we're going to put some <laughs> colour in your life. <laughs> Until we meet again, remember, make sure make you put sure some colour in your life. Colour in your we'll life. see you next time, guys. <laughs> Bye, Bye now. Bye. <laughs>